Hello, YouTube. Today we're going to be reading Jim Butcher's Death Masks. Um, as you see, I've kind of got a new mic set up. I'm going to see if this works a little bit better than my uh, old stand that I built. You kind of see it in the corner over there. Anyway, today we are on Chapter 11 of Dresden Files, Death Masks. So this is Book 5, Chapter 11. If you've missed the other chapters or the other books, please do check in the playlist below. And let's go ahead and start on chapter 11. Ivy seemed reluctant to leave off petting Mister, but she and Kincaid left without further conversation. I shut the door after them and leaned on it, listening with my eyes closed until they'd gone. I didn't feel as tired as I should have, probably because I had a wealth of experience that suggested I would get a lot more worn out before I got a real chance to rest. Mister rubbed up against my legs until I'd leaned down to pet him, after which he promptly walked over to his food bowl, ignoring me altogether. I grabbed a Coke from the icebox while he ate, absently pouring a bit onto a saucer and leaving it on the floor by Mr. By the time I'd finished it, I'd made up my mind about what I had to do next. Make phone calls. I called the number Vincent had left for me first. I expected to reach an answering service, but to my surprise, Vincent's voice, tense and anxious, said, Yes? It's Harry Dresden, I said. I wanted to check in with you. Ah, yes. Just a moment, Vincent said. I heard him say something, caught a bit of a conversation in the background, and then him heard him walking and a door shut behind him. The police, he said. I've been working with them throughout the evening. Any luck? I asked. God only knows, Vincent said. But from my perspective... It seems the only thing accomplished is deciding which department is going to handle the investigation. Homicide? I guessed. Vincent's tired voice became dry. Yes. Though the mind boggles at the chain of logic that led to it. Election year. City management is politicking, I said. But once you start dealing with the actual police personnel, you should be all right. There are good people in every department here. Only hopes. Have you found anything? I've got a lead. I don't know how good. The thieves might be on a small craft in the harbor. I'm heading down there presently. Very well, Vincent said. If the lead is good, do you want me to call CPD? I'd rather you contacted me first. Vincent said. I'm still uncertain of how much trust to place in the local police. I cannot help but think it must have been the reason the thieves fled here. That they possessed some contact or advantage with the local authorities. I'd like as much time as possible to decide whom to trust on this. I frowned and thought about Marcone's flunkies taking a shot at me. Chicago PD had an unfair reputation for corruption, thanks to in part to the widespread mob activities during Prohibition. It was inaccurate, but most people were people, and people aren't immune to being bought. Marcone had attained police-only information with disturbing speed before. Might be smart. I'll check it out and let you know. It uh, shouldn't be more than an hour or two. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Dresden. Is there anything else? Yeah, I said. I should have thought of this last night. Do you have any pieces of the shroud? Pieces? Vincent asked. Scraps. Or threads. I know that many samples were analyzed back in the 70s. Do you have access to any of those pieces? Very possibly. Why? I had to remind myself that Vincent seemed to be largely a non-believer in the supernatural. 
So I couldn't come out and say it, that I wanted to use thermology to track down the shroud. Uh, to confirm identification when I find it. I don't want to be foxed with a decoy. Of course, I'll make the call, Vincent said. Get a sample FedExed here. Thank you, Mr. Dresden. I said goodbye, hung up, and stared at the phone for a minute. Then I took a deep breath and dialed Michael's number. Even though the sky was barely light with morning, the phone rang only once before a woman's voice said, Hello? This was my nightmare. Oh, uh, hello, Charity. It's, uh, Harry Dresden. Hi, the voice said brightly. This isn't Charity, though. So, maybe it wasn't my nightmare. It was my nightmare's oldest daughter. Molly? I asked. Wow, you sound all grown up now. She laughed. Yeah, the breast fairy came to visit and everything. Did you want to talk to my mom? Some might find it significant that it took me a second to realize she wasn't being literal about the fairy. Sometimes I hate my life. Well, um, is your dad around? So you don't want to talk to my mom? Check, she said. He's working in the addition. Let me go get him. She set the phone down and I heard footsteps walking away. In the background, I could hear recorded children's voices singing, the rattle of plates and forks, and people talking. Then, there was a rustling sound, and a thump, as the handset on the other end must have fallen to the floor. Then I heard a sound of heavy, squishy breathing. Harry? sighed another voice from what must have been the same room. She sounded much like Molly, but less cheerful. No, no, honey, don't play with the phone. Give that to me, please. The phone rattled some more. The woman said, thank you, sweetie. And then she picked up the phone and said, hello, anyone there? For a second, I was tempted to remain silent, or possibly try to imitate a recording of the operator. But I steeled myself against that. I didn't want to let myself get rattled. I was pretty sure that Charity could smell fear, even over the phone. It could trigger an attack. Hello, Charity. It's Harry Dresden. I was calling to speak to Michael. There was a second of silence, during which I couldn't help but imagine the way Michael's wife's eyes must have narrowed. I suppose it was inevitable, she said, naturally. If there is a situation so dangerous has to require all three of the knights, you come crawling out of whatever hole you live in. Actually, this is uh, sort of unrelated. I assumed it was. Your idiocy tends to strike at the worst possible place and time. Oh, come on, Charity. That's not fair. Growing angry made her voice clearer and sharper, if no louder. No. At the one time in the last year that Michael most needed to be focused on his duty, to be alert and careful, you arrived and distract him. Anger warred with guilt for dominance in my recognition. I'm trying to help. He has scars from the last time you helped, Mr. Dresden. I felt like slamming the receiver against the wall until it broke, but I restrained myself again. I couldn't stop the anger from making my words bite, though. You're never going to give me an inch, are you? You don't deserve an inch. I said, is that why you named your son after me? That was Michael, Charity said. I was still on drugs, and the paperwork was done when I woke up. I kept my voice calm, mostly. Look, Charity, I'm real sorry you feel the way you do, but I need to talk to Michael. Is he there or not? The line clicked as someone else picked up another extension, and Molly said, Sorry, Harry, but my dad isn't here. Sonia says he went out to pick up some donuts. Molly, Charity said, 
her voice hard. It's a school day. Don't dawdle. Uh-oh, Molly said. I swear, it's like she's telepathic or something. I could almost hear Charity grinding her teeth. That isn't funny, Molly. Get off the line. Molly sighed and said, Surrender, Dorothy, before she hung up. I choked on a sudden laugh and tried to turn it into a series of coughs for Charity's benefit. From the tone of her voice, she hadn't been fooled. I'll give him a message. I hesitated. Maybe I should have asked to wait for him to return. There wasn't any love lost between Charity and myself. And if she didn't pass word along to Michael, or if she delayed before telling him, it could mean my death. Michael and the other knights were busy with their pursuit of the Shroud, and God only knew if I'd be able to get in touch with him again. On the other hand, I had neither the time nor the attention to spare to sit there butting heads with Charity until Michael returned. Charity had been unreservedly hostile to me as for, for as long as I had known her. She loved her husband ferociously and feared for his safety, especially when he worked with me. In my head, I knew that her antagonism wasn't wholly without basis. Michael had been busted up several times when he teamed up with me. During the last such outing, a bad guy gunning for me had nearly killed Charity and her unborn child, Little Harry. Now, she was worried about the consequences that might be visited on her other children as well. I knew that, but it still hurt. I had to make a decision, to trust her or not to. I decided to do it. Charity might not like me, but she was no coward, and she was no liar. She knew Michael would want her to tell him. Well, Mr. Dresden, Charity asked, just let him know that I need to talk to him. Regarding? For a second, I debated passing Michael my tip on the shroud, but Michael believed that I was going to get killed if I got involved. He took protecting his friends seriously, and if he knew that I was poking around, he might be inclined to knock me in conscience and lock me up in a closet now and apologize later. I decided against it. Tell him that I need a second by sundown tonight, or bad things will happen. To who? Charity asked. To me. She paused and then said, I'll give him your message. And then she hung up. I hung up the phone, frowning. That pause wasn't significant, I told Mister. It doesn't mean that she was chewing over the thought of intentionally getting me killed in order to protect her husband and children. Mister regarded me without the mystic, distant focus of his feline eyes. Or maybe that was the look he got when his brain was flatlined. Either way, it was neither helpful nor reassuring. I'm not worried, I said. Not one bit. Mister's tail twitched. I shook my head, got my stuff together, and headed out to investigate the lead at the harbor. Thank you for listening to chapter 11 of the Dresden Files. Make sure to stay tuned to watch and listen to the next episodes. Also take a look at the other activities and other things that we are doing here um, on the channel. Make comments. Uh, let us know if that's more of what you want us to do as well. Um, I do kind of want to spread out the horizons and get a lot of things going at this time. Um, I do also want to thank you very much for watching my channel and you all have a wonderful and blessed day.